Hello, and welcome back to What's Bubbling is in I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to continue to take a look at the new things in Zim 10.9.0. We've seen two bubblings, one on flare and one on binding. So now we're going to look at all the rest of the updates that come along with it, or at least many of them. You can come to the Zim site now at zimjs. Com. And once again, we're having this ZimZap prizeria for most of 2020, uh, where there's a total of $2020 <laughs> to win uh, $202 each month if your prize gets or if your prize, if your zap gets picked in the prizeria competitive, we've got some judges. Come on in. Hey, enter. You may as well. Uh, they're fun to make. It's a win-win scenario. You get to try Zim or make things with Zim and possibly win a prize. Anybody can win. We had three entries last month. Maybe we'll grow some. Yeah, maybe yours. Okay, so uh, let's see. We want to go to the docs right here. Docs. And then hit updates. It's a rather kind of a secret hidden place, isn't it? But here's all the updates. You can also find this from the Zim News. There's a link to it from there. So 10.9, we've already looked at binding. Yes. Uh, we've introduced Ajax, so we now have an Ajax class. We've been using JSONP. This thing called JSONP is a way to send data back and forth. But now there's Zim Ajax, much like you would have Ajax in jQuery, for instance, or other Ajax libraries. We've got Level, so we're going to take a peek at Level. We've already looked at Flare. Uh, special Colors, so we've got um, some colors. Uh, we'll take a peek at that and series improvements. Yes, so we'd like to look at series improvements. Uh, fast frame. Um, this is what you should run if you're not using a Zim frame. So we've, we've done a few things with the CreateJS improvements here that now require us to set something up so that you can use Zim properly with CreateJS. So if you're uh, using Zim primarily in CreateJS or from Animate. Well, if you're doing it from Animate, you should use Adobe Shim, um, or, well, Zim Shim, I guess, for Adobe. And that will uh, connect you up nicely there with Animate. But, you know, I mean, you don't have to. However, I would suggest you use Fast Frame. So it's a quick way to make a sort of a default little frame without actually making any any canvas or objects or that kind of stuff. It just points to the right places and prepares us for Zim Retina and, and a few other things like that. So it's fast frame. We've changed all our warning colors to Zog Yellow. So a couple of Zims ago, we introduced Zog with a bunch of little colors and I'll, I'll show you those as we go into our sample code we're about to hit. CreateJS, uh, it was a fairly big change here. We're starting to take a look at CreateJS and help uh, help with the updates there and things like that. One of the updates will be probably to its local to, local to global, these guys, local to global, global to local. And so things work with hit areas and masks and cursors when the window uses this thing called the device pixel ratio. Um, that's what gave us Zim Retina. So we've been working with that for a while, but they didn't quite get updated to that. So uh, Zim, uh, or well, uh, CreateJS 1.3.0 is an update to our version, or Zim's version of CreateJS, to handle that stuff for us. And we had to put in place a system where Zim can still work with older CreateJS and this CreateJS and still work with um, the proper pixel scaling there uh, for Retina. So that was tricky. It was throughout um, a fair number of changes. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know, maybe a hundred different places. However, it, it, it solved it fairly well. I mean, it's, it's pretty decent. It's just either using the stage scaling or it's using one. So if CreateJS is already handling the stage scaling, then Zim doesn't need to, uh, that type of thing. And uh, I think we're, we're good there. Uh, some general updates on things like uh, just typos, talk, top and bottom, return for chaining. Label outline has been fixed, so we'll take a peek at that in the code we're about to go to. And then a series of patches to what we already did. Uh, let's see. the um, A few things that you'll want to change or update to this is, is if you were... 
uh, using things like the emitter and animate when you reduce the window those those used to be running and then we paused it but when we paused it we automatically unpaused it when we maximize the window again and some of those things might have been paused on purpose <laughs> so that has been patched now to to work properly there so all right we've patched uh, zim physics 2 as well to work with 10.9.0 uh, so that's a patch to physics 2 all your all your physics 2 should be working with 10.9.0 and create js 1.3.0 that was more of that retina retina fix updates okay that's enough for for hanging out in this text document here at the updates <laughs> is that okay let's go to uh zim updates here zim 10 updates and have a look and see what's going on we're we're using a radial color isn't that beautiful it's really easy to do now i can't believe how beautiful that is and then we're going to put an outline on this Zim 10 updates here. And these are some of those Zogs with colors. Zog B, Zog G, Zog Y, Zog R, Zog P for pink. Okay, let's get out of here. I want to reduce that down and come on into some code. So our updates for 10.9.0. This is that page that we just looked at. 10.9.0 with the new 1.3.0 for CreateJS. A uh, reminder that CreateJS is no longer using a min here. That's for the Zim ones, the CreateJS on the CreateJS repository still using underscore min, but we brought it in line with our Zim side with uh, the directory here, and then just the name of it for the minified version. If you want the docs version of either of these, it is underscore doc like that and that gets you the text versions of them which we call it the doc versions <laughs> all right so we come on into here and we're making a rectangle stage width stage height and here's that radial color right here so radial colors and gradient this is a radial gradient and gradient colors have always been a bit of a pain to work with. I, I finally gotten used to, to working with them. But you pass in an array of colors to start, an array of proportions as to where those colors hit. And then for a circle, the center of the circle, so we're putting that at the center of the stage, and zero, that's the starting radius, and then span out. If we wanted this to be a full radial from the center, we would do the same thing again here. We would take stage width, stage height, and stick it right here like that, and then it would be radial from the center. But we shifted the center back to the big side. So the big, the big radius is now moved over to the left, still equal in the height, and it's got a radius of stage width. So that is giving us the beginnings at the zero, zero, but as it gets bigger, these colors, the bigger side has shifted negative 50. So it's centered over here in the end, like at the end of it all, it'll be centered there. So this big, big ending circle at the stage width, uh, this radius, but it's going up and down, will be back here at minus 50. And that leaves a bunch of purple left over here and creates this effect for us. So that's nice. We can throw that into uh, colors for Zim shapes, uh, such as rectangles, circles, triangles, um, blobs, and any components made from those. Some, almost all the components have backgrounds that are also made from Zim shapes. So you can pass in radial gradient, bitmap, or sorry, radial color, right here, radial color. Um, What's the other one? Bitmap color is the bitmap one, and then uh, gradient color. So gradient color is a linear gradient. Rather than, rather than calling it uh, a linear color, you know, it was sort of like, you know, uh, so we call that one gradient color, radial color, and bitmap color. There's lots of examples too on the flare video a couple of videos back. So we're making a label here. We're adding some text to it, changing the font. That's our local font. If we wanted to publish this, we would we would have to bring in the font up here in the frame. We would bring it in as assets. It's not too hard to do. Just take a look at the frame docs and find out how to bring in assets. And there's information on how to bring in fonts, including things like Google Fonts. But we're looking at this locally, so that's all we need. We're giving it a size. And then here's the outline color in white. This was shifting off as we brought in Retina. We were having some problems with it. And now hopefully we've got it all worked out. So there now is the outline on that text. 
It's an interesting outline, isn't it? See the difference? And you can bring up the, the width on that if you want. Okay, so next then, why don't we pop on over to this intro example right here. I have it, have it up uh, right here. So I want to talk about the index. As we pick up that circle, it's, it's level or it's stacking layer or whatever you want to call it. Uh, has it's moved up. So now it's at the top and this one's at the top now. So that's within a container. Within any container in Zim you have this stacking order. We usually think of it as an index I guess. And you can do things like get child at a certain index and you can set child index and that's all in a parent. And it's a little bit confusing and long to, to do things that way. So what we've introduced now is a level property. So this will have a level of zero, this will have a level of one. If we said to the rectangle, rectangle rec dot level equals one, it will boom, pop up to the top. So there is now a property which you can get and set that gives us a, the level. And all that does in behind is do that set child index and get child index for us without us having to think about it. And one nice thing here in the intro in the binding where we uh, we saw a video of this the last bubbling video here we are binding the properties that we're binding are x y and level so that makes this kind of thing possible where now we're just asking for the level property we couldn't really do that very easily if we had to run a method to find out what the level was so this is important because as we come back, and let's, let's take a look, the rectangle's on top. If I refresh, the rectangle's still on top. If the circle's on top and I refresh, we want the circle to be on top. Well, if we didn't have the level recorded as well, that wouldn't happen. It would be whichever one, and so we'd save it like this. Imagine our person, we've got a little person hiding, and when we come back, it's, it's like that. It's like, hey, what happened? So uh, that's the level, and that's new to 10.9.0. <laughs> Took us long enough to get there. <laughs> that's not our fault. Uh, CreateJS started us off without a level <laughs> property, and so we just never got around to thinking we need one. Um, but I think it will be handy. All right, coming back to our next example here is on the series, so the, what's new. And you can go to the docs on series and see. Here, let me show you where that is. So if we pop on into the docs and hit series like that, enter, here's the series. And series turns out to be quite important. We're using it, we're using it a lot. It's one of the Zim V values where if you set a series of things, every time you run that, every time you run it, it will uh, get the next thing in order. So it's not that hard to do with code, but it, it's really handy to have have it done for us so that we can pass these things in as parameters and, and so forth. So here's um, some examples of getting series. For instance, if you set up a series with red, green, and blue and call colors, then it will give us red. Call colors again, it gives us green. And the neat thing is, is we can pass this into places. For instance, here is a series of blue and red passed into a rectangle that is passed into a tile. So the tile is going to tile based on these rectangles, and every time it makes a rectangle, it gets the next color in the series. So this one has alternate colors. If you put an array there, that's another Zim V value that would um, that would randomly pick from those. So uh, the series is nice because it's not random. And we found that, hey, <laughs> lo and behold, we can actually use a tile to position all of our interface elements if we wanted to. We just pass the interface elements in in a series and that way it knows to get them in order. And we didn't really expect that. The tile was built primarily for you know artistic tiling. We didn't really think it was going to become like a table in HTML. <laughs> That's basically basically what it's like. There's also a wrapper, the new wrapper to 10.8 where you can then wrap that stuff like uh, like we're doing these days with the flex box and, and stuff. But um, the tile still very handy. Okay, coming down, we've added functionality right here in Zim 10.9. So what I've done is I've copied this stuff and put it into, into the code here. And we're gonna take a look But back on here. It's going to output to the, the, the console here for us. Now check out this console. Ooh, 
boy, look at that. So we're outputting different examples from that, and in each case, we're changing the color of the Zog. And in the example, we're saying which color this is going to show. And that lets us look at this information and understand what's going on a little bit better without us having to put any words in here. We're, we're, we've divided this into sections with no words, and that's nice. We found that in binding, we were working heavily with binding, and, and we showed you that in the last in the last bubbling video, when we were using binding, we made the reports also use these things. So the bind reports have their own color that they use. And and as we were working through, binding can get kind of complex, but as we were working through that, we were uh, zogging our own or logging our own uh, values and constantly using colors to, to in amongst all the binding ones and in amongst all the stuff we were doing, we were using the colors there to show uh, what was happening. So this has become very handy to have. Uh, I like it. All right, so let's get back then to the, the, the series though and see why these numbers are coming out as they are. Now, if this has been too much for your brain, you're welcome to put this on pause and come back a little bit later. You should, <laughs> has it been too much for my brain? <laughs> Hard to say. We're gonna look at the series now. Uh, like I said, series has become quite important for us. So we bolstered it a little bit and added some features to the series. So let's take a look and see what those are. All right, <laughs> okay, here we are. Start at an index of three. Ah, this is one thing that happened, and this is all. This all comes from practice. As we're building, it's sort of like we wanted us to have a series, but when we first started, we wanted to remember where we were in the series from the last time. So imagine that we click through a series and then go to save that data, and we come back. Well. Previously, there was no way to start the series at a different number rather than the start, like other than the start. So now we've got a jump right here. So we can chain on a dot jump, and that will jump us to 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. So when we start, it's going to start there. And that's what we're saying here. We're now going to loop through our series, or loop through, and we're going to zog in blue whatever these color, uh, whatever colors will show. So, oh, uh, except I changed it from colors. <laughs> Darn, let me just, uh, I realized that we weren't using colors anymore. We were using numbers there. So everywhere we put colors, I should have had numbers and we made adjustments in the, in the docs, but I forgot to adjust it right here. So we called that nums. We're so used to using colors for series or series for colors. Uh, all right, so uh, nums, we've got these nums. We decided it was easier to work with nums to see what's going on rather than colors. However, it's still gonna zog blue in the console, which is fine. Okay, so we've got these nums. Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and if we're starting at index 3, that's 0, 1, 2, 3, it should start off at 3. So the first time we run nums, it's going to say 3, and then what else have we done to it? We've got a reverse, what do you know? So our series, instead of going forward, is going to go in reverse. So we've chain, chained a dot reverse on there, therefore it's going to go 3, 2, 1, and we've constrained it. So the constrain would mean if it's going in reverse, it's going to stop at zero, but not exactly stop. The next time the series goes, it's going to call zero again. So that could be handy for some things where you don't want to loop, you just want to get to the end. And if we call the series again, then it's just going to show that end one over and over and over again. So if we weren't reversing, we would be heading this way and it would just hit four, 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 four because of that constraint. If we didn't have the constraint, it would go three, two, one, zero, and then four, <laughs> right? Because we're going backwards, so it would then loop and go backwards. And if we're going forwards, then it loops to the beginning. So you might be wondering, well, do we have a bounce? But anyway, we'll come back to that. Let's take a look at these blue ones here to see if indeed we go three, two, one, zero, zero. So we uh, come back here, and well, there they are, three, two, one, zero, and then Firefox with its uh, second zero showing up there, so zero, zero. Now we're moving into the green ex explanations down here, and if we want to go forward again, we, we chain on a reverse, 
and say false, and that will allow us to go forward again. We went three, two, one, zero. We are actively sitting at zero, so the next time this thing gets run, it's going to be zero. So now when we run this, it's zero, and then it goes one, two, because we've run it three times here, and we're going forward. So the greens are zero, one, two, right here. Now we're moving into the yellows. So the zog y for yellows uh, go back and forth rather than the default loop. So by default, it goes back and forth, but we've turned our series on here to bounce. So now when we loop five times, it was at two. The next time we run this, it's going to be three, or at last, it's not sitting at, at two. It, it actually output two, so it finished that one in the series. Now it's sitting at three, and so it's going to output three first, four, then it hits four and goes back to three, two, one, and starts going down. So it hits the end. We are here, it hits here, and it comes backwards for those ones. So let's see if the yellows did that. Three, four, uh, three, two, one. Yellows, three, four, three, two, one. Indeed, they did bounce. So we're, we've run one, we're sitting at zero, and then we increase the step to three. Uh, which way are we going? I guess we're still going backwards. <laughs> so this one's, a little bit, this one's a little bit twisty. We're sitting at zero, we bounce and come back. <laughs> anyway, so now we're going up by threes. I am actually not going to explain it. it it's explained here. Um, but uh, the step can be changed. Isn't that neat? So you could go up by two, you could go up by three, you could go um, by default, obviously, it goes up by one. So you can set your step that you want. And uh, according to that explanation, here's what is supposed to happen. Zero, three, two, one, four. And uh, does it? Zero, three, two, one, four is correct, yeah. Finally, if you want, you can just uh, find out what number you're on. So this is the series dot index, and it's gonna tell us one because that's the current number that we happen to be on um, that would happen after four coming backwards four three two one because we're in steps of three going backwards <laughs> anyway there you are that tells you tells you what number you're on cool huh and uh, all this is sort of on this little we'll put this up in the zim explorer we'll call it 10 updates and by the way zim explorer i'm not sure if you've looked at that yet um that was another update someone zimjs.com in there. No code is needed. And then explore. Here's what Zim Explorer looks like these days. Not quite. Oh, I haven't updated that page yet. That's why I uh, said I would, but it's not there. Why don't we do that right now? So I'm gonna save that and we'll upload it and refresh. And there she be. So that page is for, there for you to look at. I was trying to get you to just see Zim Explorer. And that looks like this now. Um, the Explore videos are there, of which this is not. This is a bubbling video. Explore video takes you into things in more depth. Uh, although this one wasn't too bad for depth, was it? So Zim Explore files are here. Check this out. And so there's an alpha mask, perhaps. Um, and then here's an erase uh, type thing and simple alpha mask. I thought that was draggable, yeah it is. Okay, so those are two examples. Uh, did we pop up the new window? Yeah, we did. And there they are. So these are all just files that we've worked on at various times to answer questions or just try something out. As a matter of fact, what happened is uh, almost 300 of them. Nice, huh? What happened is, our, our server worked it out so that we used to just show our directory and all these files would just be in there in the directory. And then our server changed its security policies and wouldn't let that. And so for the last year, we haven't actually been posting much in Explorer because it, it sort of, you couldn't see them anymore. <laughs> it was too bad. So eventually we, we bit the bullet and the last version of Zim, I think, we bit the bullet, we came in and we actually made uh, an interface into Zim Explorer for you to bring back those files. So we'll start posting some more there as well. Lots of ideas in there. The other one that was like that was CDN. Our CDN was, uh, we used to just 
allow people to look at the directory. And then we couldn't. So the CDN has been updated as well to, uh, we used Perl script to sort of pull and organize the, the documents in the CDN. So there's our latest CDN file right there. And there's all the earlier ones. Then it goes to all the doc versions of the CDN. And then it goes to older CDNs that we brought in from CloudFront on Amazon. So if you're still on Amazon, you should come in and start using the zimjs.org one. You can find the very equivalent files there. If you wouldn't mind doing that, that would be great. And then there's the various Zim socket stuff and some CreateJS versions and some older whatever, whatever, whatever versions. Socket IOs and things. Okay. Oh, right. Yeah. The the very end ones are are the files that we work with. Things like uh, Socket IO, 3JS, Box 2D. These are our versions of of those libraries. All right. That's the Zim CDN, and this has been a what's bubbling Zim. These are some of the latest changes in 10.9.0, and we're already, we got some cool ones in 10.9.1. We don't know where to go. I don't know. What do we do? 10.10.0? We're trying not to go to Zim 11. Uh, the last two updates we could have done, we could have gone to Zim 11 on either of them, probably. Like this one had binding, which is huge. And the last one, what did it have? It had wrappers. So it had like, we're introducing sort of wrappable content on, on, the, on the canvas. Either of those could have gone to Zim Levs, but we're trying to keep it to Zim 10. We're not sure. Maybe they'll go to Zim 2020 or something. We'll pull the Microsoft move. Zim 2020. Or we'll start calling it silly things. Hey. We're about to introduce a character to Zim. I wonder, a cat. <laughs> you call it Zim cat. Anyway, these are the bubblings, and we'll talk to you later. I am Dr. Abstract. Come on in and, and join us at zimjs.com slash slack. If you want to talk about any of these things, we'd love to see you there and uh, share the Zim word. Ciao.